everyone and welcome to Andy Kay's Tarot. This week I am going to do a VR to Katie Flowers and Ethany on unpopular tarot opinions and this is going to be a sass back episode. All right, let's get into it. Um, tarot size cards are um, getting too big and inaccessible. I am a big fan of the Next World Tarot. Um, it's as big as my hand. Um, I have small hands. I have arthritis. Um, is it easy to shuffle this deck? No, but is it easier for me to manage these cards? Yeah, actually, um, it is. Um, it is. And sometimes, if you see me shuffle on my channel, my shuffle might seem kind of sloppy compared to people. Um, that's because I actually find larger cards more accessible and the accessibility of cards really is very personal. And as others have pointed out, there's a huge range. I don't think there is a need to do a proper spread when pulling tarot cards. Um, it's really a personal opinion. I use tarot spreads mostly, not always. I do think it is easier when learning to use tarot spreads. You are going to have more definition about what that card is talking about. You are going to learn what kinds of questions to ask to get the answers you are looking for. And so I'm going to say that starting with tarot spreads is a wise place to start on a tarot journey. Too much focus is on the divine aspects in some decks. It's like they forget many people are atheists um, and these aspects tend to be gendered, which puts me off as an envy. Okay. From my cultural standpoint as an indigenous tarot reader, that is full of a lot of white assumptions. Okay, yes, the majority of tarot decks that are out there are from a European point of view and divinity in a European point of view is tied to a binary, uh, gen a gender binary. <clears throat> Something created by Europe upon the rest of us, first of all, um, and not something that is necessarily tied to divinity. I absolutely focused on divinity in my tarot deck that I created. <laughs> Here's an unpopular opinion. Um, I didn't make my tarot deck for atheists because I don't know how you can divine if you don't believe in the spiritual world. So the next one up that I'm going to cover is if you're going to read tarot, you should do some learning first. Um, I think it's wise. I, I come from a spiritual background where um, we would believe that, well, you might have skill to jump into something based on your intuitive and divinational gifts alone, that without the learning, you're not bringing as much to the table as you think you are. Um, and I would question why someone would want to skip the learning. Okay, so next one up I am going to do is a deck market is saturated with the same thing. Oddly, this was an RWS sort of assumption. And have you seen a Marseille deck? And I'm grabbing a Marseille deck that looks different than other Marseille decks. Um, so tarot's based on a system which um, makes it easier to learn. Uh, there's a few systems out there. And so the majority of cards are going to be based on the same system. Marseille tends to be a system where like buyers pride themselves on how identical it is most of the time, except for those of us out there buying uh, decks like uh, this beauty here, which is um, 
the uh, Latero Archetypal. Um, and um, I have another one like this too. So, um, it, yeah, it, it's based on either RWS, Toth, or Marseille. So, uh, I don't know what you're expecting. There are plenty of decks out there that uh, don't look anything like that. And you could totally go for those. <laughs> On the flip side, uh, there are trends to be um, all-inclusive decks, blah, 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 Karen. Yes, Karen, artists can create a white supremacist deck if they want to. They're free to be white supremacists if they want to. That's their choice. And I'm going to call them a white supremacist when they create an all-cis white hat deck. Because that's what white supremacy is. But they're free to do that. I'm just going to call it what it is. And a lot of us aren't going to buy that racist white supremacist bullshit. On yet another side of this coin, um, there is love for the RWS, but a wish that there is a newly created classic system. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree. Um... So there are decks out there where an entirely new system was created for that deck. It creates a lot more learning and personal study because you don't have the benefit of other people's knowledge. There's a lot of folks who, like me, are bringing a decolonial or a global majority view to tarot as it stands today. And... Um, like decolonizing um, and that understanding, bringing an anti-racist lens to that understanding uh, that's already there so that um, it's easier to build knowledge on a system that's already there. And while I'm not a fan in the real world of recreating a system without just tearing it down because the racism still there and implicit I actually think I apply a different setting to tarot because tarot is how we read this world and um, so we do need to see those problems in the tarot deck also while also decolonizing them at the same time there's a duality in this shall we manage to decolonize the world I think we will need a fresh perspective all right um I don't think there's anything inherently spiritual in the cards. They can just be a fun game. They can. Um, and I agree, there's nothing inherently spiritual in the cards. I believe the spirituality and the divination lies in the reader. So next up, reversals. One unpopular, I don't know if these opinions are really unpopular or not. Um, one is... Opinion is reversals are integral to a really clear tarot reading. Without it, it gets too vague. Whereas somebody else finds that reversals um, are limiting and makes them rely on the book meaning. Okay. I think it creates a fuller understanding if you understand the card's full meanings, including its reversal meanings. I don't think you need to read with reversals to include those meanings. And in fact, I understand that a lot of tarot readers don't read with reversals, but include those meanings in their understanding to pull out when they feel the need to pull out those understandings. Um, I read with reversals. Whether or not I pull out those understandings depends on the reading whether it's a reversal or not, interestingly. Um, so I chaotically read with the reversals. I think the important part is understanding the full meaning. I think if you are finding them limiting and it's making you rely on the book meanings, it's um, that that hasn't been integrated into your knowledges enough yet to read beyond the book meanings with it. All right. And the next one. I don't think props and a tarot aesthetic are important to a good tarot reading. Ah, 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 ah. Well, 
Props and an aesthetic are not necessary to a tarot reading. Um, they help both the tarot reader and the client or querent. Um, it helps everyone be in the mood. It um, ritual, uh, space, place, feeling, um, feeling like you're in a spiritual space. Um, <clears throat> helps you be in one and um, taking advice as a querent from um, a reader who's giving you the atmosphere you expect in a tarot reading is also helpful um, to taking that information in and sitting with it and believing it and working with it and finding the empowerment in it. So that's my thought on that. All right. Here's one. The tarot we know comes from a card game made in Italy during the 14th century. Actually, 1400s, which was the 15th century. Um, and the essence of tarot comes from much more ancient spirituality or ideas that can coexist. No, Karen. Not when one of those ideas is frequently used to erase the other and also not when the other idea is frequently used to erase the truth <sighs> okay um the tarot as we know it is a card game from the 1400s um that was based on uh cards from other people um we know some of them came from egypt uh, we also know some came from the Romani. They might have been the same cards. They might not have been. The Romani might have been using more Eastern cards. It's hard to say. Um, and they are certainly were different than the cards white people created out of tarot. But saying um, the cards we know it as today gives a separation like they're a completely different creation than divinational cards prior to um, the white version of tarot. Um, and that's an important essence of all of this. Um, recreating something does not make it a different a different creation. It's still appropriation. Cultural appropriation is often far removed from the realities of what it was stolen from. Tarot's no different. It's just not. Secondly, the much more ancient spiritualities is questionable only because I don't know what you're talking about. Are you talking about Tarot is based on secret Egyptology hidden in the cards. Egyptology of that time was a bunch of stuff white people made up about Egypt. If that's the way it was in the in in the fourteen hundreds, it's the way it was in the seventeen and eighteen hundreds. Largely, it's the way it is today. Um, so. Any Egyptology hidden in the cards is fake, actually. Um, but it is actually based on other spiritualities in, from so many places, um, from the Arab, um, African, and Asian worlds. So, no, those ideas don't get to work together. In some ways, they do work together. They work together as white supremacy um, to um, cut tarot's ties to its ethnic roots. All right. Um, you only need one tarot deck. Um, tarot tube made you want more. <sighs> and yet, it's unboxings you watch. Watch something different. Um... You only need one deck. I find as a tarot reader, a professional tarot reader, it is easier for me to have multiple decks 
to draw on multiple points of view, multiple opinions. Um, so I like having more than one deck. Your relation to consumerism um, and your relationship to spirituality and your relationship to tarot is your own. Um, and um, there's other things to watch on tarot tube. And the more folks choose to watch other things on tarot tube, those of us who do very few boxings or don't do boxings at all, uh, we'll have more views and you'll have more to watch. Okay. Um, the guidebook can be just as important as the deck. Um, and can be, yeah, it can. It can be a divinational tool too. Yes. Yes, it can. Um, I'd be careful how I stated that. Uh, the guidebook is just as important. And yet, tarot decks without guidebooks are often just as good. Um, it, as long as I don't need a guidebook to help me relate it to its traditional meaning. Um, I find some guidebooks when they're well written. I love guidebooks when they're well written. Um, when they're well written, they give me new understanding of the tarot cards and I've increased my knowledge base to draw on and I appreciate that. Um, if one were to say that to mean or to understand that to mean um, you can use the guidebook to give a professional reading, I disagree. <clears throat> um, I think they're also good for study, for your personal study. Um, but if you're relying on a guidebook to that extent to do a personal reading, um, you're still very much in a learning phase. So you are learning from the guidebook um, in, in, a, in a very student phase. And, and so then it becomes even more valuable to you. Um, you don't have to be intuitively gifted to read the cards, just mindful and intentional. Okay, sure. Um, but I won't pay to go to you as a tarot reader if you don't have um, divinational or intuitive gifts. And if you don't have them, maybe you don't know the difference a tarot reading can make uh, from somebody with divinational and intuitive gifts. In this... Uh, I am going to say, yeah, this is loaded with my cultural bias. Loaded with it. And I'm not going to change that. I, I don't think somebody with no divinational or intuitive gifts or qualities or, or learnings can um, do the same quality reading as somebody who has those gifts. And so I just want to pay for it. Okay, um, I don't like the art on the RWS. Me either. Me either. Um, hardcore collecting takes away from spirituality. Uh, do you mean hardcore collecting of tarot cards takes away from spirituality? If I collect keychains, does it still take away from my spirituality related to my tarot? Is that consumerism somehow different? If I'm not a collector, but I shop a lot because I enjoy shopping and have the ability to do a lot of shopping, I don't. Um, does that, you know, not take away from my tarot because it wasn't tarot I was shopping? Our disconnection um, takes us away from spirituality. Our disconnection does. And if we're disconnected from what our issues are, what our strengths and weaknesses are, and where those things are having impacts, if we're disconnected 
from the root of what the issue is, like capitalism. Um, if we're disconnected from it, it's impacting our spirituality be, because we're disconnected from how we're functioning and walking <coughs> in this world. Um, um, I believe capitalism is harmful um, and detracts from spirituality, but we live in a capitalist world. And the joys we are able to get are largely capitalistic ones. And while there are other non-capitalistic joys out there, there's usually some level of privilege associated with um, accessing those non-capitalistic joys because they can't just make non-capitalistic joy out there available to everybody. You have to have participated in capitalism effectively enough to have earned such a thing. So, if um, what you are purchasing, you are purchasing through connection, through understanding, you're staying in touch with yourself, um, then you're okay. If, if you're disconnected from your relationship to the root problems, you're probably not okay. Um, so you might not be a collector at all and may not have heavy tendencies towards consumerism that are very visible, but yet could actually per be participating in capitalism much more heavily with a complete disconnect to you, um, your relationship to it. And, and that would be much more unspiritual. Um, okay. Twin flame narrative is overrated. I agree with that half of this. And love readings are out of control. I focus on empowering. Okay, spiritual Karen. It's lovely for you that you and your buds have your lives so together that um, you don't have these sorts of concerns about relationships. But if you do have concerns about relationships, I guarantee you it is one of the most overarching things going on in your head. And what's empowering is validation and help through that. Not, oh, I'm too spiritual, Karen, to lower myself to your love and relationship problems because I'm a privileged <coughs> ass bitch. And the money in my life makes my relationship flow so well. Why isn't yours? Did you not manifest enough money to do that? <sighs> yeah. Bullshit on that. Okay. So, the next one. Some decks are too artsy, not enough symbolism. I agree. I agree. I think some decks have too much symbolism and not enough art. Um, and, um, there's certainly decks I struggle to read, um, b because there's not enough in the picture to tell me what that's going on. I need either symbolism or story, one or the other. Okay. Um, indie creators don't, who don't want to reprint should make their cards available on places like playing card make playing cards fuck your amazon attitude karen <laughs> you don't get everything you want karen so sorry i'm not going to make my deck available on makeplayingcards.com cuz you didn't get it you don't get everything you want. And everybody else said such great things about it. Watch the other videos I linked. Okay. Um, and Katie Flowers added at the end of her original video, um, a second printing is not a second edition. 
Correct and noted, Katie Flowers. Noted. Um, it is not. You are so correct. I will make sure not to do that. Um, but yeah. I don't know if saying second edition is sometimes just a mistake of knowledge or if sometimes it's a nasty marketing employee, in which case that sucks because it's not. Uh, it has to be different to be a second edition. There's people who will buy first, second, third editions. If it's just a second printing and it's exactly the same, they don't want that. They wanted a, a, something different, a second edition. They're different. All right. And that wraps us up. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you like, comment, and subscribe and made it to the end of the video where I say that's because, as usual, I forget in the beginning. And, um, you know what? Make your own VR. Uh, make sure to include the others. Make sure to watch the other videos linked um, and, and search out and see if there's more. Um, I probably missed some. I've been moving, so there's definitely YouTube videos I have missed in the last, well, in the last month between packing up Kickstarter decks and moving. Uh, I've missed a lot of videos, so also search, see if there's more, and tag me and everybody else so I can have a chance to see your video too. So see you all later, folks, and have a great day, and, you know, get out there dive into these things and sit back and ask yourself, am I putting this through a decolonial lens? Am I putting this through an anti-racist lens? And then proceed. See you later.